Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Elder Scrolls Legends video. I'm Furo and right before Christmas I have a very fun deck for you to try out which is a Pilfer Monk. So the deck was created by one of my viewers. Um, you're not seeing too many Pilfer Monks right now on the ladder so I thought just give it a try. It was created by uh, Solly so a shout outs to him. And uh, the deck is very fun to play if you're not familiar with Pilfer. Um, that is a, a ability kind of ability for a creature so if you attack your opponent if you hit damage in the face with the creature uh, you are triggering the pilfer effect so that is in this case for example the daring cut but that would be plus one plus one so the unit is getting buffed by plus one plus one so instead of a two two you have then a three three on the board so pretty cool but what makes pilfer really interesting is the card that is called the master of thieves because then friendly creatures with pilfer may attack an extra time each turn which is cool if you have already pilfer units on the board but you have a decent chance to give all your creatures pilfer if you have the also the support card thief stand on the board which is a four magica support card friendly creatures have pilfer plus one plus one which means every creature on your board side has pilfer so if you then have the master of thieves on the board as well every creature can attack twice which is very cool indeed and if you have two master of thieves on the board every creature can attack three times and because the creatures are also getting buffed they are just getting stronger and stronger so if you attack with a three attack unit first and then if the master of thieves out you will attack first with three damage and then after that with four damage so even one small creature would be already good for seven damage which is very powerful but also a bit unstable because you really need some tools in hand to make the combo work and that's why the deck is not seen too often on the ladder despite that's very fun to play so it's totally cool if you have a board full of creatures and then boom master of thieves there thieves then everything can attack again that comes as a surprise for your opponent deals a lot of damage in one or later two blows and that's pretty pretty good uh, to make it work even better we are running some shouts alongside so with a world wall here we can buff our shouts we have for the shouts the drain vitality which is kind of our destruction tool so give an enemy minus minus one minus one if you have the level two it's minus two minus two and level three is give all enemy creatures minus two minus two so uh, way more powerful if you can go to level three relatively fast if you have the world wall early on you can get that to level three in a relatively short amount of time Plus, the other shot we have is the Call of Valor, which is a 3-3 Song Guard hero on level 1. But if you make it to level 3, you will fill a lane with 3-3 Song Guard heroes. So for 3 Magicka, you then get 12-12 of stats on the board, which is um, coming as a surprise again, if you have then also the Thief Stand and Master of Thieves on the board, because that is just 12 with the first strike. And then the second swing is just increasing that to 16. So that will be 28 points of damage if you have the full lane of song art heroes and then the master of thieves and thieves stand on the board and the rest of the deck is kind of similar to the mid-range monk deck so if you like mid-range monk i think you will also love this deck here it's pretty similar to the mid-range monk so also you're trying to deal damage kind of fast into your opponents um, in your opponent's face you are trying to play your units on curve and make the most out of your stuff so well, that's pretty interesting. A nice addition from Clockwork City is the Sails to the Storm. That is right now not working. So let me just um, look up for that. So the Sails to the Storm is this card here. Uh, Pilfer, some of the top creature of your deck. Six Magicka, five, five. Um, so he's also, of course, greatly working with the Master of Thieves. If you have the Sails to the Storms on the board and then the Master of Thieves, well, you can just get two creatures summoning with the effect. So that's also a powerful tool for you in a Pilfer deck. To give you a little clue about the sheer power this deck can create, I will now show you two games that I've played with the deck earlier on the ladder. Of course, Legend Ranks. So I hope you will enjoy those and I hope it's helpful for you. If it is, please just hit the like button or share the deck with your friends, whatever you prefer. Also, if you have a question still left unanswered, uh, just use the comment section. I'm normally helping you relatively fast. Even over the Christmas days, I'm still there. So uh, just feel free to ask me and I will probably answer you within 24 hours or something like that. So don't be shy, just do it. And now some gameplay is coming. So please enjoy that as well. So here we go. So we have our first matchup here. We have Monk versus Mage. That could be, of course, a control mage. Um, Goblin Skull should be good for the start. Let's redraw the Hive Defender and the Curse as well. We get the Curse anyway from the Goblin Skull, so there is no need to keep that Curse in hand. Um, if he's playing a token mage, then yeah, you could say the Curse is cool for the start against the token mage, but 
Um, against the control mage, you do not need the curse card early on, so let's just drop it and start with the goblin skark. No turn three, unfortunately. So maybe it's not working out as a wall, but uh, we have no shout now in hand, so it's also not the greatest one turn. I totally keep that until you have a shout, so we can find one with a grey bad mentor. I keep a spare blade in Going for the quartermaster. So that is not necessarily looking like a control deck. All of the lore. Yeah, we can upgrade that with a with a wall. I think for now it's just really good to drop a goblin skulk and then uh, find the curse guy next turn. And we might then even play world wall here and buff the call of a lore if you're not interested in just dropping the unity on the board. Camel like hero. So it's a very aggressive deck. And there is also the Seeds Den. Oh, interesting. So if we hit him here, we get the Curse card, which is great. We can then use the Curse card to hit uh, the Quartermaster, for example. We can use the wall to uh, buff the Call of Alor. That's another good idea. The thing is also, I totally like to buff the Dray Metality, so uh, we might even just play the Call here. And then play the Grey Bat, hope to get Grey Metality. Grey Metality is in this matchup probably better than having a lot of Call of Alors here on the board. Uh, on the other hand, Sieve's Den is coming, so that's a lot of damage that we can push. Mm. Yeah, you know what. Let's drop the Call here. And let's use the Curse on the 2-1. He's probably just hitting the face with the Camelon Hero. I will then use the Goblin Skunk for face damage. Get another curse, and we might even play the Thieves Den here instead of the Grey Bird Mentor. Oh, that's a trade there. Huh? Because he's trading. Interesting. If you are trading, there is a Drain Vitality. That's already pretty good. That's indeed already pretty, pretty good. Um, we have the Thieves Den here, but he's playing aggressive. How about we keep that with the Master of Seas a bit longer? We will play the Grey Bat Mentor. Trade into the 4 2. We get another Call of Alor. Uh, I'm totally happy also to buff the Call of Alor now. Have a huge board, play Sieves Den in combination with the Master of Sieves, and then we are winning the race easily. So we can, for example, then use the World Wall on the Call and also play Dream Vitality on the next Behold turn. He's not just sitting face. So if he's we will crushing the. Interesting. The blood sources. Currently, that's just two points of damage. So I don't think we necessarily need the Drain Vitality on the 2-1. What we totally want is the wall out. Gonna need to drop that. So if we play it here, we can play the whole lane on the right side. The wall is not strong enough to kill the 2-1, so that's why we are going left side. We will then buff the Call of Alor, make it level 3. We're using the Drain Vitality here on the 5-3. Gonna trade. And then the call is crushing the right side completely. Lead me into battle. Lead me into battle. Lead me into battle. And most most likely I will battle. drop with the Sieve stand, and I just hope that we are also getting a two drop. That would be excellent because that allows us to play Sieve stand plus a two drop. If you're not getting a two drop, then we're kind Your of wasting a bit of magicka. And there is a Pierce and Javelin. I'm still using it on the Blood Sorceress. We could trade here yeah, for sure, but on the other hand. Then we do not need to tread, we can just put more damage in the face. Now he's now he's using a lightning bolt for one of the Song of Heroes, which is pretty good. Ooh, this one is also decent. Ah no, we want the Sieves then. We want to play the Master of Sieves next turn. And if we want that, we have to play the Sieves then now. Not getting that extra juicy life from the Dawnstar healer. But we get increased units on the board. So he's normally not playing an Ice Storm, but if he would, then these units are out of range for an Ice Storm. So because he's playing kind of an aggressive deck, he will not play an Ice Storm, of course. But that's already a pretty strong board. Next turn, Master of Thieves. And boom, you're just winning the game My because the units are already like on the board. Irox Summoner too slow in the situation. So there is potentially not much he can do I now. Like Almost well, Spy Master. Yeah, it might be GG next turn. Mage Trick. Probably not good enough. That's just the sentry. He's probably taken the guard. Or he should take the guard at least. Will you take the guard? You will take the guard. So guess what? You are probably still dying. We got another call of a law. It's also pretty funny. So Dawnstar Healer, clicking that on this side. We will crush this unit. Put the damage in the face here. So we will get then three life back because of Dawnstar Healer. And then guess what? We can now play the Master of Thieves here. 
And the Master of Seas allows us to use our units to attack again. So we can attack again with the Pilfer units. Boom, we get the life back. And we will then win the game and that is a conceded. That was fast. Six minutes for the game. Easy peasy. For the second game, I will face an assassin. Drain Vitality, Seeds, then East March Crusader. So let's just face it. East March Crusader on turn 3 or turn 2 if we have the Magicka here. It's not really that great. You want the card roll later. Drain Vitality might be cool. We might keep that mm, against the Assassin. Ah, well. Ah, let's even drop that. So the thing is, whenever I drop a Shout, I will just get the World Wall in my hand and have no Shout in hand. So uh, we are still dropping that. And let's just hope we get a stronger early game. And see, there is a shout now, and there's the sails, which is potentially way too expensive for now. But we will then start with the broom to the call. At least, if I look at the hand, that's just what we want to do. If you're not getting a world wall, if we get a world wall, then yeah, curse. Well, it's another useless card. I want to get that from the goblin scout. So if we there's would have gotten a world wall, then we would have used that, play that on the call of a law, and then play the broom to the call and keep in the magic card for a bit longer. He's not checking the broom, huh? Yeah. The unit that is giving us life back. If I fall. So dropping that fight is good, you could. Oh, okay, I like the curse gun now. And a daring. Mm. So yeah, the daring it is. Because, so, this one would give us a 3. But uh, the daring can then attack next turn. We also have a 3-3 three, three on the board. And of course, if we get a wall, world wall, we can still buff that still. If we if we play it now, there is no possibility for buff. So it's better to start with a pilfer unit. Camelon Sentinel is unfortunately a bit of a problem. Damn. So now the, the song out here would have been better than this one. But we cannot change it now. So mistakes were made kinda. But you cannot expect to see this one too often right now. It's a great card still nonetheless. But there are so many gate 3 Magicka units that the Camelon Sentinel is one card that you will not see too often anymore. Yeah, many apologies indeed. But it could also be that he's playing some sort of Prophecy Assassin. So far we've seen two units, two Prophecy units, but also two guards. So maybe that's a sort of a slower control My Assassin, you never know. The run is probably, that's another we guard. Our own fate. Oh, okay. And again the Blood Sorceress. It's funny. That's indeed funny. Well, our only chance now is to play other Master of Thieves or play the Pearson Javelin. Master of Seas is strong if we play one turn later the sails. I think we go for that. So he might push a bit of damage with the Blood Sorcerers here. I mean, we have a Pearson Javelin in hand, so it's not like we cannot crush it. But because we kind of want to play the sails next turn, that would allow us not to play the Pearson Javelin. Duma going for Lethal and Wardcrafter. You waste my well, now I'm thinking, shall finished. we use Pearson Javelin on this guy? And there's a wall. Ah, oh, damn. If we just trade, trade here, again. then of course, yeah. This one would kill both units. We can then use a Pearson Javelin to kill the Blood Sorceress. And it's still one off. Ah, uh, no, 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 let's kill Many that. Apologies. So pushing six in the face. No help for him right now. Then next turn, so one turn later, the Blood Source is getting off, which is pushing an extra five into the face. And right now we have no chance to kill that. I mean, we still have the sails. We we have the World Wall, so if we get the Dream Vitality, I would happily buff that, despite the fact that it's not helping us too much right now. This one offers another Skooma. Uh, guess what? Do you now drop another ward? That's all right. If so, that would be Seiko. Yeah, please give me a card. Not giving me a card. He's good. Shadowfoot. Now, nah, guess what? So we are trading. We're pushing three into the face. We're dropping the sails through storm. He's not pushing five into my face because of the blood sorceress, which is, uh, well, not too nice of him, but we get another card, which is Thief Stan. That would be really sick. So it gives us two cards. The Master of Thief could also attack twice, plus we are getting more damage. How much is that then already? That is 5, that is 11, that is 3 plus 7, that would be 18. So if we just play the thieves then, the game might be already over. Plus we are stealing a card and if he's giving us a firebolt, at least we, we can kill the blood sources. Oh, there's another one. The damage is just increasing, but that also means we still have the left side completely open. We still have the left side completely open. If I'm not mistaken, and Your I missed some calculation finished. here, but I don't think Your that's the case. 
So we should then have enough. And another Master of Thieves. Holy moly. So yeah, uh, let's just see. Let me just count again. That is 5. That is a 6. Then that's 11. Yeah, that's enough. If he's not hitting me. So Thieves then. Let's see. Fail through storms, does it again. And there is instantly something. No, there's not. Okay. So we can push then Fail the 6. We get another unit on the board. Boom, boom, oh, that would give, give us some life back. And now another 3 into the face. And that's it. Wow, we, we got it. We even have another Master of Thief here. So potentially we can attack with the sails again. So let's get another unit on the board. Boom, and he's out. Thief's then powerful tool to drop with the sails on the board. So I think the second game especially was a good example on how the deck is working out when your opponent has no answer to, for example, a sail through storms or the Master of Thieves. If these are staying on the board and then you drop the Thieves then as well, that is not only a lot of damage, but also a lot of fun if you get some additional units on the board. So I like the deck a lot. I have uh, tried it yesterday on stream. I had fun with it. So uh, if you like to have some fun with Pilfermong, maybe try out this deck list. I think it's very viable right now. You can have some fun with it. Uh, it's probably not stronger than a normal mid-range monk, but still uh, very fun to play and a bit of a surprise for your opponent because you are not seeing too many pilfer monks right now on the ladder. So with that, I wish you a wonderful Merry Christmas and then uh, probably see you after the holidays. So have a great, great Christmas day and see you then, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>